Hey there, I'm David. This is Kirby. Let's do this. A few weeks ago, I ordered some filament uh, samples from a company called Colorfab here in the Netherlands. Been wanting to experiment with different filaments, and they're pretty close, so delivery is really, really fast. Local company figured, why not let's support them? And when I got the samples in a nice box, I posted on Twitter and asked for some suggestions what to print. One of the colors was this super cool fluorescent pink, and a user by the name of Orange Pascal asked me to print Kirby. Now, I've known Pascal for almost 10 years. Pascal and I, we both started uh, developing on Android in the early days of Android. I had a clock widget called DigiClock Widget, and he is a game developer running his own studio called Orange Pixel. Really, really nice guy. Produces incredible little, little games. A lot of fun. Uh, really difficult games. He, he specializes in these insanely hard platformers with uh, really cool pixel art graphics. Incredibly talented guy. Basically runs the studio on his own. Codes, does the art, I think his girlfriend helps out with QA occasionally. But really, really talented guy, fantastic studio. Check them out, I'll put some links in the description. So, Pascal has a bit of an obsession with Nintendo games, I think. And from the classics, he obviously loves Kirby. So when he saw the pink filament, he suggested that I make one. Now, of course, I wasn't going to make my life easy. So, when it came around to it, I started looking for a model. And found this one on Thingiverse by a user called Chaos Core Tech. But the model itself was... it was very easy to print. And he actually called it easy to print. And I figured, no, no, I, I can't do that. I can't leave it at that. I'm not... I mean, I got to know Pascal through playing his really difficult games, so I decided I have to make it a little bit hard on myself. So I went full Joel telling on it. Um, obviously you know Joel, 3D Printing Yard, fantastic channel, check it out. But he has a habit of printing things really big. So I figured I'm going to scale this thing up. I don't remember the exact percentage, but I think it was around 600%. And decided to buy a full spool of the filament from Colorfab. They were really excited to hear about my project. Um, Looking forward to buying some more filament from them. Really cool people over there. In total, this took 25 hours. I've got a new time-lapse setup, which you're going to see in a second. Really, really nice time-lapse, but it does take a lot more time. I think the base, uh, well, Kura estimated it at 23 hours, which makes a lot more sense, um, because the time-lapse pulls back to take the shots. Uh, layer height of 0.16 millimeter, um, a tree support, so you might look at this and think it doesn't really need supports, but Kira decided it was going to put one little support just to hold the upper of his mouth. This made a lot of sense because, yeah, there's quite a steep overhang there. Other than that, obviously minimum infill area was on, but was absolutely useless for this model. I did decide to put three outer walls because I didn't want you to be able to see the infill pattern in, like, through the walls. You can still a little bit, and I'll get back to that in a minute, because I think it could have done with a couple more walls. I did encounter some issues while printing this. Uh, mostly related to the change in, in angle, especially around the top of it, and especially at the scale. I think the combination between ironing and the scale of the model meant that as it ironed over, it knocked a couple of the layer lines. So, in the end, I ended up with these weird little gaps, and you can see it in the close-up. It was also visible on the legs, but I've painted it so you cannot see them, which is why painting helps quite a lot. It's a shame, because I didn't want to paint the body. I wanted to keep it in this beautiful fluorescent pink filament. Absolutely love this color. Um, but yeah, that does mean I'm going to have to live with these little gaps and, and these holes in it, unfortunately. But, overall, really pleased with this model. I mean, this is definitely going to go on a display shelf. Another issue that I ran into is that at the time, my first layer height wasn't sticking properly. Now, I, up until now, was using the, the stock bed on the CR10 Mini. 
That is a sheet of glass. And I've heard a couple of times people complain about that sheet of glass, that it isn't perfectly level. So I was helping my friend Peter move and we went to a hardware store and he actually suggested buying me a mirror because as I've read a couple of times, mirrors are the perfect replacement because they have to be perfectly smooth to give a good reflection. So bought a mirror, popped it on the bed here and since then have actually had a fantastic first layer on almost all of my subsequent prints. I've only done a couple small things so far, um, mostly messing around with the beautiful gradient PLA that I used for a tracer. It's now finally starting to hit uh, blue, just finished up the green sections. So yeah, since then the, the first layer has been perfect. It's a shame that didn't happen on here because there are a couple little issues on the bottom and especially where, where the first section kind of moves up, you can see some layer shifts. Unfortunate, but you know, I think because of the scale of the model, it still looks amazing. Super happy with this. Now let's check out the time lapse. Alright, hope you enjoyed that episode, remember to like and subscribe, leave some comments down there, let me know what needs to be printed next and I will do my best. I think for the next one I'm going to revisit a comment on the first video, so let's see what I can do. I've been struggling to get the model right, but I'm going to get there. Alright, remember to be awesome. Cheers.